So the beauty of all art, and, and certainly Mitchell would, would fit into this, is taking something that's so simple and making it beautiful. He had a talent to do that with his with his photography. Uh, take the simplest thing and, and make it something beautiful. I think it's really unique that he focused a lot on urban photography. He would take trips to Baltimore all the time just to photograph like the streets and the people there, which I thought was really interesting because where we come from in Southern York, it's extremely rural. It's bare bones. There's not much there. So to me, it was interesting that he kind of developed this this niche to like go into larger population centers, like just cities and photograph the stuff that was going on there. I think his photos are pretty abstract. You know, it's up to interpretation what he's trying to capture in all of his photos. I know he does a lot of um, like cityscapes kind of stuff. And it's not always like the beautiful skylines, you know, sometimes it's rougher areas or town. I love how raw they are because he does mostly cityscapes and not showing the downtown areas but showing the actual like places and i love how he chose to do those instead of like the pretty places audiences need to see how a city actually is and how people actually live and i just love how he himself chose to show just like the Rasta. I thought it was really cool because like it kind of was just taking images of like everyday life and just kind of taking it from the perspective of just being like a person around seeing all this. And I think that's something I really enjoy because like the reason I love being in Pittsburgh so much is little moments like that, just seeing like lots of human interaction and stuff just going on. Like life is is beautiful. And I think that he really thought that too. And I think he did a great job of capturing that. It was just really like soulful like just deep but some of his pieces were just really colorful at the same time but it just still had this like presence um i just remember this one shot that he had and it was i want to say it was a black and white um picture but it was just so like raw but it was just so professional looking and it just really stood out to me of like wow he's like far beyond his years in regards to his talent. Uh, it seemed like something that he like wasn't trying to be, uh, what would you call it? Too much, quote unquote. Like he was just like basically showing emotion through like the scenery of a, of a place really well. And um, also his daily, his daily photos, that's right. He was always obsessed with the moon. I always loved how, how high quality he could get of the moon sometimes. he. He had some really good pictures. <laughs> he had a different eye. I focused more on people, like couples, portraits, but he liked to focus more on nature. Like he would, I don't know how he would do it, like pictures of birds and stuff. Like he would capture it like right at the most perfect time. I could never do it. He just had really good patience with that at least. <laughs> Mitchell and I have different types of like photography like I like to do portraits and he likes to do more like lamps landscape and like urban photography there was no like who's doing this like more than doing this or anything because our photography styles were very different and it was also really interesting to like look at each other's like pictures um he would look at mine and I would have all these portraits and he would just hype me up with those which was so fun and then I would hype up his like portraits of like urban photography and everything and so we both like had like a pretty like different style of photography, but we both just like loved each other's work more than anything. It was so, such a good dynamic that way. I'd say we have kind of different styles. He had more of like a, a very urban and city style to his photography, more modern I'd say, but it was, it was always really inspiring. We kind of clashed with our styles in a little bit, but it was it was it was a good clash. I thought he was a very good photographer. He definitely had an eye, and he knew what he was going for with his type of style of photography. He definitely wasn't going for something that maybe like somebody else would want him to do, or he wasn't going for what I guess the like crowd would want him to do. At least for me, when I took pictures, I liked long exposures and like bright lights a lot. But I feel like he took more to either like nature or urban photography, which is really nice because it's like, I feel like that's kind of what he likes, you know, urban and hip hop and kind of this, um, you know, kind of style that's like 
still young, but it's out there. It's expressive, it's different. And I, I, I liked it a lot. You know, he'd always send me pictures whenever he took it. He'd be like, yo, what do you think of this picture? And like, I'm about to post it, like check it out or something. It was always nice to just see something new from him like every week. Cause he always would take crazy pictures. He would always be like, what about this angle? What about this? He would always try to do a bunch of different stuff, which I love. That's what it, that's what it needs to be is something that's crazy like that. But then with that, I saw he could go so much further. Just from the first pictures he took to the last, there was a huge dramatic change and I didn't really see that stopping anytime soon. Anytime we were doing anything together, he always had his camera, no matter what kind of thing it was, but he was just all about capturing things in the moment. Like I'd ask him like quite a bit like to go out and take pictures because like I saw like his photography Instagram with like where he posts like basically everything, like the moon, birds, like people he's taking pictures of. I just thought it was really sick because he like he could capture some really like dope pictures and stuff. You know, I think with with Mitch, um, he was that kid that uh, I admired in the fact that he really had a nice balance to life uh, and school. I think some kids come in and for them it's you knock everything out of the park, um, every assignment you know has to be completed to perfection. And I think with Mitch, he was this this kid that. You know, there were certain projects that he latched onto and he worked so hard to make sure that it was the best that he could be. There were other times that, you know, he might have been late on assignment and I don't say that as a bad thing. You know, that that was because with his photography, he wanted to wait until he got a good photo. So, you know, he knew that he was going on a trip uh, to Baltimore and, and even if it meant being late, he was going to be happy and proud of those photographs. I could definitely see him being big into photography. I know he liked Mr. Bowers a lot. Um, and so did I personally as well. But I know he was really big into photography and he was good at it too. He wasn't just, you know, doing it on the side kind of like for fun, but he took it pretty seriously from my understanding and he seemed to do a very good job at it from the pictures I had seen and, you know, everything like that. I never knew the, the side that was just like working on creating these interesting arts or like some of the photos he would take. Like when he, I remember him taking a trip down to Baltimore and there was one of a guy with a, a milk cart that I just, I really liked the photo. And I just, I never knew that there was that side to Mitchell up until high school. And so it was interesting seeing that. At, at first to me, it was, it was pretty bizarre. Uh, I didn't really expect Mitch to be like that sort of like artistic person, that sort of person that uh, is super, super creative but looking back it it makes a lot of sense like his his sort of uh relation to art sort of mirrors his like soccer style which is very artistic flashy i'm really glad i was able to see that side of mitchell it's something i never thought i would have saw but something that i'm really glad that i did when he started talking about photography um and his art i just remember him always talking about like where he was trying to get his shots done like the photo shots and everything else and he would talk to the other students about where he's planning on taking it and what he's planning on doing with it. So it was really interesting to see that side of him because seeing that side of him really made you realize that there's more to Mitch Brown than just a soccer player, just a student. Like he was an overall just great person with a lot of talents that, you know, unfortunately was cut short. Whenever I like a thought of Mitch will randomly pop into my head sometimes and I'll take out my phone and I'll go flip through his his photography account on Instagram. And it brings me a little bit of, a little bit of peace, a little bit of sadness, a little bit of calmness, even though it's just a, a social media account, it's a memory of uh, a hobby that Mitch had that any one of us could just go and access whenever we miss the guy. And I think that's really special. Like I could just, whenever I miss Mitch, just go take a look at his photos and kind of appreciate something that he worked very hard on that is still here for all of us to see.